Well, the Delhi Sustainable Development Summit is a global event. We get world leaders from all over and uh, they include heads of state, heads of government, Nobel Prize winners, um, you know, thought leaders of various kinds, including CEOs of major organizations and so on. The whole purpose is for us to focus on all aspects of sustainable development and each year we have a very specific theme on the basis of which what we're trying to do is to sensitize decision makers and the public at large on what the long-term challenges are to human society. And of course, as part of that, the government of India also gets advice, but uh, we do a lot of projects for the government of India. We do a lot of projects for other countries in the world. Uh, Terry, my institute, is a large organization with over 1,200 people. So we have an extensive reach and we're able to do uh, a fair amount, but what the impacts of this are and are going to be in the future is very difficult to say. In some sense, I would say the uh, scientific advisory board uh, that has been uh, established would also need to carry out extensive outreach uh, because I think science, if it has to impact on policy, must uh, reach those who are going to be able to take decisions uh, that have an impact on sustainable development. And I hope we in the SAB can do that effectively. We have a very robust set of procedures. We are a very transparent and um, a, a, a diverse organization which draws in scientists from all over the world who incidentally uh, donate their time and talent without any compensation from the IPCC. I mean, other than developing country and, and uh, economies in transition uh, participants in IPCC activities who receive travel support and, and per diem and so on. Nobody else gets paid for the enormous amount of time and effort that's put in. So what I would say is that uh, we have uh, been able to maintain very robust practices and I believe what comes out in the form of reports of the IPCC um, are uh, very rigorous documents which assess all aspects of science related to climate change. But we are living in a, a world where things keep changing and after 20 years of existence we had the Inter-Academy Council carry out a review of IPCC's practices and procedures and what they recommended was acted on by the governments of the world and they implemented a substantial part of what was suggested. I suppose in a few years from now we might want to do something similar so that you know we ensure that whatever practices we have are really in keeping with the expectations of the public and decision makers. And, uh, uh, practices that would produce or help us produce the best possible assessment of science. I think there are several other areas of uh, public policy where science is an important input and uh, certainly the experience of the IPCC could be replicated. Um, but let me say that it's not very easy uh, to establish a uh, system and an organization that the IPCC has been able to do over a quarter century of its existence. Um, however, I am very happy that the IPBES has been set up because I believe in biodiversity. There is need not only for comprehensive global assessments, but also assessments at the local level in several parts of the world. And therefore, I would submit that um, Perhaps there could be other areas also where uh, IPCC type systems could be set up. However, that really depends on what governments of the world decide to do. Because if you are going to set up intergovernmental bodies, then clearly the, the driver of such a decision has to be all the governments of the world. You know, the SAB really has a remarkable opportunity. It also has a huge challenge. It's not only a question of defining how science can impact on policies related to sustainable development, 
but also our ability to be able to communicate this. But of course, we are working for the Secretary General of the UN and he would take effective action. But it seems to me that his hands would be strengthened enormously if we could also communicate to the outside world and to the public at large by which people understand what the UN can do, what the Secretary of the UN, UN can possibly initiate and change in order to bring about a movement towards sustainability in all, all our economic activities. So I would say that uh, the SAB perhaps should also come up with an effective outreach strategy by which whatever work we do, whatever thoughts we distill and bring together, we are able to communicate to the public at large. Because in my view, that would also help the Secretary General with whatever recommendations and advice we are able to render to him. Because he would get universal support for what he wants to do then.